Welcome to this presentation on Python and SQL. And we are going to make Python language calls inside of SQL Server. That's really exciting and it's only recent that you could do that. Prior to this time period, you could call SQL Server from Python just to get a data set and then manage it inside of Python. Before that, you actually usually ran the applications completely separate, uh, sometimes using some sort of a middleware or driver to make those uh, calls. This is going to be really exciting because most people haven't seen it, and I think it's going to be very powerful. Python is one of the most popular languages for data analysis and has recently garnered a lot of interest. It's because Python has the right set of libraries for data analysis and predictive modeling, and it's easy to learn. So the question is, what are the advantages of integrating Python into SQL Server? Well, Microsoft did this integration because it's an application developer's preferred language for performing AI operations. It's much easier to embed data analytics, machine learning, and AI functionality into existing database code, and then at the end you can reformat it to use further. Another question is, should I use Python or R? It's been said that the more you use R, the more of a PhD data scientist you are, while the more you use Python, the more of an engineer or developer you are. Python then is used in a production environment when you're going to produce applications that are going to be delivered online and that you have to deliver findings, results to many different people. Whereas R is used for offline discovery and analysis, maybe for individual research projects. Also, Python is much more scalable in terms of the data and the growth and R isn't as scalable, but it's not used that way. Before we do some queries in SQL Server, let's talk about the setup. If you're going to do Python in SQL Server, then you need to install machine learning services and check the boxes for Python in the setup. Make sure as well that you install Python. It's got to be on the machine. Next, you can look at the entire setup here at this URL at Microsoft's website. When you read that, go through all the steps, also make sure that you run this stored procedure to enable external scripts. And you'd have to do that whether that was for Python or for R. The main stored procedure then that you're going to use is called SP execute external script and that's a system stored procedure that lets you execute an R or a Python script and use that as an argument. Here is our first Python script in SQL Server. It's not going to call data or anything from a table, it's just going to output the word hello world that you see so often when you first do a language. So we execute the stored procedure that we mentioned that we're going to see in every one of these. It's execute sp execute external script. The language is set to be Python and here's the script and we're going to print hello world. So what does the n mean? Well n means that it's going to be unicode character string constants. Without n, you're going to get the default code page of the database, which may or may not recognize certain characters. The language is then, uh, in this case, set to Python, but valid values are Python and R. Here's our query in SQL Server. Let's go ahead and execute it. The first time that you run that, oftentimes it's, there's quite a delay because you're integrating Python into SQL Server. But notice, here's our hello world. 
and so that's going to be a message from our external script. So that's our first basic Python script in SQL Server. Our second Python SQL script is going to be much like our first except that we have with results set and then we repeat our hello world but we have some data types there as you can see now what you what you're going to get is column names so this one is going to explicitly state that our first column is hello our second column is world and then we have the data underneath it so here is the query in SQL Server and the with result sets is going to give us those two column names so let's execute our script and let's look at the answer and notice that we have a column title hello and world and then the data hello world but notice the exclamation point which comes from right here so our data is hello world exclamation point and we have column titles so now we know how to make column titles in Python here is our next Python script for SQL Server and it's just going to be some basic Python to understand about declaring variables and using those so again we execute our external script stored procedure set the language equal to Python our Unicode coding scheme and then we set variables equal to values here so variable 1 is equal to I write Python code in SQL Server variable 2 is 100 variable 3 is 50.5 and now I am going to print variable 1 which is my little string about I write Python code and then I'm going to add up 2 and 3 and print the results so that should be 150.5 then I want to check and see what my data types are with those three variables and I want to print those three data types so let's see how that works here is our script in SQL Server let's run it and then let's look at the results and see that we get the string I write Python code in SQL Server I added up my two variables the first variable is going to be a string because I put code into it or I put a sentence into it the second variable is an integer it's 100 and the third variable is a float because I have a decimal point so we get to see some basics on the Python language and how to write those and execute it in SQL Server this script is continuing with some real basic logic using Python in SQL Server so I have three print statements and it says print true and true so true and true evaluates to true my next one is true or false and that should evaluate to true because one or the other has to be true for it to be true the third one not true should be false so I will print that and that's just basic logic in Python let's run this in SQL Server execute that and look at the results to see that we get indeed true true and false so it's understanding a little bit how true and false would work and how to do that in Python this example is going to illustrate the if else Python logic we execute the stored procedure for the external script as we've done in all the examples set the language equal to Python and we're using Unicode we set the number one equal to 50 and the number two equal to 10 we then have an if else statement if number one is greater than number two print this string that starts right here else print another string it's really important to pay attention to this tab or this space thing because in Python it's crucial and it won't work if you don't do it let's execute this script then and see 
that we get a nice simple little answer and it says number one is greater than number two. Let's change that spacing to see if what I'm telling you is true. So I took that spacing out, I execute it, and notice that big ugly error that we got. And it's because you can't have random spacing in Python. So I put it back, I execute, and it works. So what we learned from there is how to do an if-else statement and we learn that proper tabs and spacing is crucial in Python. This example is going to use a while loop in Python. So here at the beginning we set count equal to zero and we say while count is less than nine then we'll do what's inside the loop. Now the first thing is to say print what the count is and then add one to the counter. In this example we have an if statement and we say if the count is equal to five then break so it'll drop out of it. So we're going to run that with and without the break just to show both ways in Python. Here is the query then in SQL Server. Let's execute it as is and I often will ask my students why they only saw 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we look up here at the code, after it's added 1, then we break when it hits to 5. So we print number 4, we add 1, it's equal to 5, and we break, so we never get to add uh, to the point where we say the count is 5. Now, let's go change our code to take out the break and see that the while loop works as we think it should. Let's take that out, execute it again, and this time you see that it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, the same, for the same reason that we never got to a 5, we never got to print out a 9 because we get to 9 and then we finish the loop. So that's just a basic while loop in Python. The next query that we do, we are going to run an SQL statement against relational tables, pass those to Python. So let's look at the inputs to the SPExecute stored procedure. First, as a review, at language is where we say that it's going to be Python. At script, is the command passed to Python runtime and it's the entire Python script and it has to be Unicode text. This is new at input data one is returned by the query and passed to Python runtime. So the the select from where query then is going to be in the at input data one variable. With result sets clause defines the schema of the return table for machine learning and in essence it gives us those column titles at this point. And the default variables defined to pass data between Python and SQL are output data set and input data set. So here is a query that is going to pass SQL into Python. As you can see right here is the beginning of the SQL here is the end. This with result set is going to define the schema. And here we have the at script is equal to everything. And we have said that the output data set that's going to be output by Python is equal to the input data set that's going to be given by the select from where query. Here is the SQL statement being fed into Python here in SQL Server. Let's run it and note that the query actually says give me the unique or distinct ticker symbol industry combination from stock data. So we know there's a hundred different stocks and we know there's 427,000 rows so it'll be interesting that we get 100 rows here at the end. So let's execute it Let's look at our results. 
and it does give us ticker symbol in industry right from our table and we pass that into Python and it, indeed it gave us the 100 rows affected. So and again the with result sets gave us the ticker symbol and industry column headings here. Let's contrast the previous query to this one which is nearly identical but we took out the with result sets. So we see that here that the query ends at order by ticker symbol. Here is the query in SQL Server. We have commented out the with result sets here. So we will execute it and we'll notice some differences right away. First, we'll see that we don't have any column titles right here. And that is indeed part of the description of what's coming out or the schema. The second thing is initially I don't see my industry and if I scroll way to the right there it is. That's because I didn't define my data types in the with result sets and so it output the data in very long strings. So those are a couple of things that happen when you don't include the with result sets in the query. Here we're going to introduce some more elements that we haven't seen before. First, we're going to import two libraries into our Python script. And these two libraries are used all the time when you work with data in Python. The first is pandas, and the second is numpy, or numbers in Python. So the way we look at this is we look at our select from, where, query, group by, and that is going to be input into input data one. That will be the inputs. So this will return uh, numbers of rows and it's going to end up in this input data one. Then here we take that input data set and it's going to be in, uh, put into a data frame in Python. So Python likes to work with data frames. So we've got our pandas.dataframe here and the inputs from our query and here at the end we do a print data info so we're not going to actually print the results of the query we're going to print information about the results of the query here is the query in SQL Server let's execute it and take a look at the results and notice that we don't get data from the tables but we have some data about the data set that was returned so there are 1,784 entries, the same number of ticker symbol, industry, trade year, closing price. The data types were float and object that were returned. And so we see that we have information about the result set and not the result set itself. This is the last script that we will do in this video. And it's going to be kind of fun because we're doing a pivot operator. Now we have pivot operators in Excel. We have pivot tables in Excel. And we have pivot operators in SQL Server. But here we're going to pivot in Python. So let's look at the query. It's the year of trade date is the first column. That's going to be really important because that is going to be the input for our new columns. We have the average closing price from stock data and then we do a group by and an order by. So that input data is here. That is what's going to be our input data set. And then we're going to pivot or do pivot table here. And we're going to have rows that have ticker symbol and ST close here where it says columns trade year that means the values in that column are going to be the new column headings when we run the query so here is the query in SQL Server that we're going to do a pivot table let's execute it and the output is something that we've not seen at all before so remember that we have the closing price is the value. The left rows or is the ticker symbol. And then the column headings are years. So let's look at that. Let's 
scroll up here and notice then that we have trade year right here and then we have the ticker symbols along this left side so ticker symbol Apple and so forth and these are all closing prices so we see a list of whatever it is nine here and for the years 2000 2001 2 3 and 4 we see similar output all the way through all 100 rows and here it starts again but now it's for 2005 to 2009 let's keep scrolling down and then see the output again for 2011 through 2014 let's keep scrolling down and we'll see finally 2015 through 2019 so the whole left side is ticker symbols the values in the table are closing price and the new column headings are years and the years came out of the data that trade year so it, we extracted the year from the date and they became the new column headings so it's kind of cool to see how pivot operators work in Python as opposed to how they work in either SQL Server or Excel.